Set yourself to return to the hot, pounding world of action and suspense as the sixth installment of Die Hard approaches. In this exclusive first look, we dive into the thrilling world of Die Hard 6 and give you a taste of what fans of the iconic franchise can expect. What do you think of the first look at Die Hard 6? Are you anticipating the movie? But what about Bruce Willis, who played John McClane? Is McClane back for one last ride in Die Hard 6? Let's take a sneak peek. As much as Bruce Willis adores John McClane, it is too late for him to return to Die Hard 6. While the debate over whether Die Hard is a Christmas film rages on, there is no denying that it is one of the best action films ever made. There is a lot that goes into making Die Hard what it is, including a well-paced, razor-sharp script that ensures the thrills never stop once they start. Still, a new Die Hard wouldn't work without a great cast, and Willis is at the forefront of that group of outstanding performances. While many Die Hard fans argue that throughout the franchise, John McClane has become less of an everyman and more of a one-man army, millions of people continue to adore him. However, as a property, Die Hard has seen better days, with director John Moore's A Good Day to Die Hard being panned by critics and even driving away many formerly devoted fans. Several times since, a Die Hard 6 with Willis reprising his role as John has been threatened, but that ship has sailed. It's time to put John McClane to rest. Are the last two Die Hard movies disappointing? It's no surprise that none of the sequels to Die Hard have lived up to the original. It's a significant obstacle to overcome. Still, Die Hard 2 and Die Hard with Inventions have a lot of fans, and many franchise fans consider them to be, at the very least, worthy sequels, even though Willis dislikes Die Hard 2. With the release of the fourth Die Hard film, Live Free or Die Hard, in 2007, cracks began to appear in the series' foundation. It's still entertaining to watch Willis's McLean take down various bad guys, and there are some jaw-dropping action sequences, but the downgrade from R to PG-13 did the film no favors. While not the toughest R-rated films in the world, the first three Die Hard films never shied away from embracing the freedom that such a rating provided in terms of adult language and graphic violence. The same can be said for Die Hard 6 or any new Die Hard projects. However, there is still hope for franchise fans looking for something new. Snake Eyes producer D. Bonaventura did go on to say that he's unaware of any future sequel or prequel plans. If Disney decides to reboot the franchise, the producer has stated that the sixth installment will allow you to meet the young John McClane and use Bruce, you sort of got to see both versions of him. Interestingly, the producer spoke candidly about the film's nature, stating, it was a project that was not Die Hard that eventually shifted over to Die Hard. The only way to save Die Hard is to kill John McClane. The Die Hard franchise has been on the decline for some time, but with the killing of Bruce Willis's John McClane, it may be resurrected. Die Hard was a huge box office success when it was released in 1988 to critical and audience acclaim, and has since become a legendary addition to the action film canon. The first three Die Hard films won over audiences by eschewing the uber-tough action hero image of the mid-1980s and instead combining intense set pieces with witty language, dialogue and charming character work from heroes, minor characters and villains alike. The Die Hard series, along with Shane Black's Lethal Weapon films, introduced audiences to a new breed of action hero, one who was old, tired and, most importantly, relatable. Bruce Willis's portrayal of John McClane, a divorced cop with thinning hair, was a polar opposite of the colossal, perpetually feuding Stallone and Schwarzenegger, oversized action men who ruled the box office at the time of the first film's release. However, the fourth and fifth installments, released in 2007 and 2013 respectively, took the character into a sillier, more over-the-top direction, quickly elevating McClane to the status of the most powerful He-Man since Chuck Norris. As we previously stated, both Live Free or Die Hard and A Good Day to Die Hard lost McClane's everyman appeal, and as a result, the franchise's consistent critical acclaim became predictable and uninspired action duds. On the other hand, Die Hard 6 producer Lorenzo Di Bonaventura teases the return of Holly McLean as Bonnie Bedelia to the series. In the original Die Hard, New York cop John McLean flew to Los Angeles to see his estranged wife Holly during a Christmas party at her workplace. Their reunion is cut short when a gang of thieves seizes control of the skyscraper, leaving John to rescue the hostages. In stark contrast to the muscle-bound, indestructible heroes of the time, John is a flawed, vulnerable cop struggling to stay alive in Die Hard. McLean, the sixth installment in the series, has been in development for several years. 
Len Wiseman returns to direct, and the story will be split into two sections, with one focusing on a younger McLean meeting Holly and working on a big case, and the other on present-day John as Willis dealing with a fallout from that old case. In a new interview with Slashfilm, McLean producer Lorenzo Di Bonaventura addressed Holly's role in the plot as well as Bonnie Bedelia's possible return. In some ways, John's reunion with Holly would be a fitting end to the family storyline that began with Live Free or Die Hard. <laughs> In that entry, John reconciled with his daughter Mary Elizabeth Winstead, known as Lucy, and in A Good Day to Die Hard, he reconciled with his CIA agent son, John Jr., as Jay Courtney. McLean is said to be very focused on the title character and his legacy, and since the beginning of his relationship with Holly will be a major plot point, it makes sense that the film will also provide some resolution to it. The Die Hard franchise should be retired. Even if actor Bruce Willis were not retiring from acting and deciding not to pursue Die Hard 6, Hollywood should abandon the franchise. It's not surprising that Fox and Disney want to make another Die Hard in an era when studios are scrambling for every last penny from their existing intellectual property. The evidence suggests that they should not be readily available. A Good Day to Die Hard's quality jumped off a cliff, with Live Free or Die Hard a step or two below the first three. If the previous films were successful, the franchise may consider replacing Willis with a different actor after he retires. This is not the case, and the previous films did nothing to develop a leading man capable of filling one of Bruce Willis's most iconic roles. Despite Willis's contentious casting in Die Hard at the time, replacing him as a franchise's leading man is a fool's errand. If Die Hard 6 is ever made, it will be a disaster. It appears that Die Hard should never have left the 1980s and 1990s as a franchise has felt out of place since. Die Hard is most effective when it's at least partially grounded in reality, whereas today's Fast and Furious dominated era necessitates a wilder suspension of disbelief shattering action set pieces. Die Hard is a Christmas ghost from the past, not a Christmas ghost from the future. A good day to Die Hard disappointed fans with a weak storyline, poorly edited action, and a lackluster performance by Willis. It is encouraging the producers are working hard to write a good script for McLean, so hopefully the result will be a fitting send-off for the character. That's all there is to it. For the time being, please ensure that you enjoy our video, and please share your views and opinions with us in the comment section. Subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on the newest news and reviews and future films from us, and don't forget to hit that bell icon to never miss an update. Thanks for watching the video, and we'll catch you guys at the next one.